All right, welcome back to my legendary build series, and I am on Sentinel today doing a solo run at Percy's, the final boss in Spire of the Watcher. Um, this is a this is actually an interesting run um, because I I've been testing, doing some testing and practicing. Uh, trying to optimize damage for this build specifically for the last few days um, and uh, primarily I've been using rocket launchers um, but it came to my attention through another content creators YouTube video that heavy grenade launchers are actually better than rocket launchers for solo play um, <clears throat> and probably depending on the boss and the situation probably more e more so even in a fire team if nobody's using Gallahorn um, the only reason why rocket launchers are better than heavy grenade launchers um, is because of somebody in the team is using Gallahorn so that everybody has wolf pack rounds um, so just generally generally speaking for DPS um, and total damage, heavy grenade launchers, if you're playing solo, uh, yeah, pretty pretty damn good. Um, so I believe it was Maven. So go check out her content. Um, her channel, like, she started off pretty small, like not even a year ago, and she's already got nearly 30k subs, like, um, and her con it's because her content is actually very very insightful um, every single video I there's something that that I've come away learning that I didn't think of um, and I saw I saw the thumbnail of the video a while ago for it was a picture of an apex predator just saying do not use or something like that um, if you're solo and I'm like what why not why wouldn't I want to use the best rocket launcher in the game that can roll with bait and switch and explosive flight uh, demolitionist I think too and yeah so what are you talking about um, so I, I actually avoided the video for a little while and then um, and then I was banging my head against a brick wall on this fight versus Percy's with rocket launchers um, and although it is possible to solo four phase Percy's with you know the best rocket launcher in the game pretty much um, it is actually a very difficult like you have to be on point perfection with every single damage phase uh, in order to do it in four phases which is not practical especially if you're just trying to get this done for like you know farming weapons or your pinnacles or whatever um, you, yeah like it's just not gonna happen on average um, so I decided to watch the video and lo and behold she was doing the damage testing on the Grasp of Avarice boss and uh, the damage like the time to do damage on that boss uh, and the damage that is done is roughly similar to Percy's and they're both big targets so they both make sense for heavy grenade launcher um, and yeah, like the testing showed that heavy grenade launcher, and because you can you can weapon swap, you act you can actually do more damage. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm swapping between Wither Horde, a rapid fire fusion rifle, and um, a heavy grenade launcher. And I'm not even using the best frame grenade launcher. I'm using Regnant, which is a rapid fire frame typically adaptive frames like the Wendigo or the Typhon GL5 uh, will do more damage but look at this just chunking away at Percy's easy quarter um, easy quarter so this is going to be like a three and a half phase total or in other words an easy four phase um, so yeah so a little bit more about the build um, but yeah, get, give heavy grenade launchers a try, especially if you're solo. Um, <clears throat> put those like uh, readying mods on your arm so that you can swap between your weapons more efficiently. 
um, and yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, the reason I'm using Sentinel here instead of like Ark, you know, even though Ark is meta this season and Thunderous Retort and all that, um, I wanted to do a different style of video because if you've seen my last two videos, which um, one was solo two phasing Galron with Ark Strider, Star Eater Scales, and Legend of Acrius, um, and my solo solo in less than 20 minutes on versus Aklas was on Arc Titan with Curious of the Falling Star and Thunderlord. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, for Aklas, I wanted to do something a little different because Aklas is actually a very dangerous boss. Um, he will he will kill you very quickly, um, and it is not uncommon if you're doing this in a team for. For people to be frequently dying, um, including during damage phase, which is gonna, you know, it's just gonna make the whole encounter that much longer if one of your teammates isn't alive to do damage. Um, so, Sentinel is actually, you know, it's pretty much a top tier, if not the best support role in the game. Um, because you can a survive from having overshields on demand um, and the seasonal artifact is actually going to help us with getting overshields easily uh, whenever you pick up a void breach you get an overshield um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah you're going to have overshields so you're going to be able to stay alive um, you're going to be able to revive your teammates. You're going to um, you're going to have an indestructible dome for shelter that you and your allies can benefit from. Um, you're going to give your teammates instant orbs uh, so they can get armor charge right then and there uh, for you know surge mods on their legs. Um, they're going to get a 25% empowering weapon damage buff from Weapons of Light, just from dipping in and out of the bubble. Um, and then you're going to be constantly weakening Percy's with this build and applying Volatile, so which your teammates are all going to benefit from. Um, so the entire for the entire damage phase, pretty much, you can make Percy's weakened and Volatile. Um, so not only are you giving your teammates and yourself a 25% weapon damage buff that stacks on top of surge mods, but you're also weakening the boss. Um, so if you compare this to other support builds in the game, like, so let's talk about Warlock. Warlock has Well of Radiance. Um, well of Radiance only gives you an empowering damage buff while you're inside the well. Um, and the solar subclass cannot apply weaken or volatile, um, and then the when the well expires, the damage buff expires as well. With weapons of light, you can actually hold on to that damage buff as long as you're uh, dipping in and out of the bubble uh, for 15 seconds longer. Uh, then you know, after the bubble expires, you still have weapons of light. Um, so you can actually get more damage potential from the damage buff from bubble compared to well. It's just well is so good because you can stand inside the well the whole time um, while doing damage. But if you place your barricade, your bastion barricade, with your bubble correctly, so if you're in a fire team I would recommend you put your bubble just behind your barricade so you and your whole fire team can just strafe backwards and frontwards in and out of the bubble up to the barricade without getting in each other's way so that when you're out of the bubble then you still have an overshield. Um, and if you're solo you do like what I just did there, you kitty corner adjacent to your bubble, your barricade so you can strafe left or right in and out of your bubble and constantly benefit from the overshield from your barricade and the reload speed um, and keeping the uptime of weapons of light. So now Percy's is below half health in two, two phases. Uh, so this is very good. Um, so yeah. Oh, and then uh, like 
we could talk about Hunter as well for support role, like if you're on Night Stalker. <clears throat> you might want to argue that while well, Tether is the best um, <clears throat> debuff in the game because it's a 30% weaken versus, you know, Echo of Undermining on a grenade, which is 15%. Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. But what else is the Hunter giving you other than the 30% debuff? Are they giving you weapons of light? Are they giving you an empowering damage buff? No, they're not. Um, so Warlocks can only give you an empowering uh, damage buff. Um, hunters can only give you a 30% weakened debuff. But Titan can give you a 15% weakened debuff <clears throat> plus 25% weapon damage buff. So when you stack those two together, <clears throat> the Titan actually gives you more damage output as a support role. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just kind of getting over this cold. Um, so yeah, and, so and if you're solo, this is obviously great as well because uh, you're you can tank Percy's damage the entire time while basically doing the maximum amount of damage that you can do in the game um, as a solo player. Um, yeah, and if you're in a fire team. And then you got that Warlock that, or any solar subclass that is applying, uh, well, why don't we just put the Solar Warlock and the Hunter, the Tether Hunter, next to the Titan, the Sentinel Titan. Then you can stack, you know, the best of the best. You can put Radiant on top of, uh, well, I don't know, you can't put, Radiant doesn't stack with Weapons of Light or Well of Radiance, um, but... You can get a little bit more weakened if you had a Void Hunter. But in, the, in this case, if you have a Sentinel Titan on your fire team, if you want to be that guy, then everybody else can just run total maximum damage builds. So Star Eater, Star Eater scales Hunters, um, Thunder Crash, you know, whatever. <clears throat> your role is to be that the one support guy. You don't really need in a... In a um, <clears throat> In a three-person fire team, you don't really need two support roles. So, um, so that yeah, this build, even though I'm doing this solo and it is extremely effective, even at damage output, it it is this is a support role. Um, so I thought it'd be important to do in this boss build series because it's not solely focused on just doing everything solo. Yeah, I am doing everything solo, but I want to show what kind of builds you can use for support as well. Um, because, I, because I think that's important. So a little bit more about the build, um, the aspects and fragments that I'm using. Um, <clears throat> I'm using Controlled Demolition and Bastion. Um, normally, like if you, if you see my, like, my Solo Flawless Legendary uh, Desperate Measures uh, versus Callus, I use um, Offensive Bulwark and Bastion. And normally for you know, campaign style missions or nightfalls or whatever, I prefer offensive bulwark all the time. Uh, <clears throat> especially if you're using armamentarium like I am here, offensive bulwark gives you like four or five hundred percent grenade energy just from having an overshield, so you get more grenades. But you don't need it with this build because offensive bulwark isn't really helping you with the damage. So I'm focusing this build on how to maximize my effectiveness for the damage phase versus Percy's first, and second, how how to use the build to survive the overall encounter. Um, so offensive bulwark, offensive bulwark isn't helping me much at Percy's, but controlled demolition is uh, the entire time because every ability that I throw at Percy's is going to make him volatile. And if I'm using Armamentarium, it means I have two grenades, I have my shield throw, so that means I have three abilities to rotate during damage phase to keep the constant volatile uptime on Percy's. Um, which is just going to add more damage, obviously. Um, and then the Bastion is just kind of like a no-brainer because whether you're doing this solo or in a, in a fire team, you want, like, you... You want those barricades to benefit everybody, uh, including yourself, because the overshield is just very good, and it's 
so it's so good to have a bubble because what a lot of people struggle with with Ward of Dawn is yeah you're safe inside the bubble uh, and you're basically indestructible but when you step outside of the bubble you can die very easily but you can totally avoid that by using Bastion and placing your barricade correctly um, next to your bubble so so that's you know Bastion is necessary for the boss fight as well, but also any time that I feel like I might die throughout this entire encounter, I can just drop my barricade and then I have an overshield. Um, then as far as the fragments, Echo of Undermining and Echo of Remnants, I think is the one that makes your vortex grenades last longer. Um, those two fragments are focused for damage, uh, because I want I want my grenades, which I chose Vortex grenades, um, for a reason. I actually tried with Magnetic grenades, but the weakening debuff expires much sooner with Magnetic grenades, and I think it even does less damage. Even though Percy is moving and can just get outside of your Vortex grenade, you're still going to do more damage with a Vortex grenade, and you're going to have way more uptime, because Vortex grenades last long, uh, and with Echo of Remnants, uh, they last even longer, which means that you are going to weaken Percy's for a long time. Like, look how many yellow numbers I am getting on Percy's. Um, and there's one thing that I could optimize here. And by the way, look, he has way less than a quarter of health. So this is that's why I'm saying this is like, well, it's like a three in the th three and three quarter phase. We'll, we'll say, but the next damage phase should be easy. Um, but yeah, Echo of Undermining and Echo of Remnants for uptime on Weaken. And then um, and then my other two fragments I may as well use to uh, focus my survivability for the entire counter. So because I'm not using Offensive Bulwark for grenade energy, um, what can I do to have more grenades? Because I don't want to wait on grenades when I'm fighting adds when I got minotaurs and supplicants chasing me around I want my grenades I'm using armamentarium uh, having two grenades is useless if I have no grenades and it takes forever just to get one grenade you'll never see the benefit of arm armamentarium if you can't cap out your two grenades more um, frequently so devour obviously echo of starvation and then um, and then I'm also using Echo of Instability for Volatile Rounds. That way when I do get those grenade kills, I'll have lots of grenades from Devour, I'll have survivability from Devour, healing on kills, grenade energy on kills, um, and then grenade kills give me Volatile Rounds. So it's just kind of a nice little bonus, but you can do, you can use something else if you want. Um, that one, the new fragment that gives you an overshield, when you kill targets while you're critical is actually extremely good as well. Um, but yeah, and then for my for my weapons um, for uh, for for setup, I'm just using trace rifle, double special ammo, so I can get more heavy bricks. This is going to save you like so much time. Uh, not just like doing it in four phases instead of five is already going to save you a few minutes. But if you're if you're not using double special. Um, you're going to add several minutes to the entire counter just to farm up ammo. So I wanted to use double special, but also because my damage loadout is um, is also double special, right? So Wither Horde is my exotic because it just does great damage over time. Uh, with the Catalyst, it has auto-loading holster, so it benefits swapping. Um, <clears throat> and then so my swap strategy is Wither Horde, uh, unload my grenade launcher, then Wither Horde, then a shot from my Rapid Fire Fusion Rifle, right? So I can swap between my Trace Rifle and a Fusion Rifle for damage. Um, and then unload grenades. And then as far as the weapons themselves go for damage, um, you can use Wendigo or Typhon GL5. They'll probably do better damage overall. Um, but this rapid fire frame that we got craftable from last season, Regnant, is very good. Uh, you can get, you can craft it with enhanced explosive light, which gives you seven stacks of explosive light instead of six. 
um, and you can put auto loading holster and I'll, I'll tell you that enhanced auto loading holster because I tested this actually makes a difference for your uh, damage phase because it means that you can go with a horde one fusion rifle shot and then immediately back to your grenade launcher if you do not have enhanced auto loading you're gonna have to shoot two fusion rifle shots because then because if you don't and you swap back to your grenade launcher you're gonna be on the reload animation it will not have reloaded in time so enhanced auto loading actually lets you cycle between those weapons more effectively um, with a rapid fire fusion rifle anyways like if you're using like a precision frame fusion it takes longer to charge up and shoot so you would probably you know be able to do one shot from that you probably do reservoir first um, but yeah I, and I'm using um, I'm using the rapid fire void fusion rifle from the witch queen with uh, psycho hack so it actually reduces Percy's damage output um, but yeah so I'd, I'd highly recommend I tried this first with Typhon GL5 and it uh, it did very well I had demolitionist and explosive light on it but I wanted to use void um, just for the simplicity of everything um, keep everything synergistic and I wanted to use my crafted grenade launcher um, yeah, so that pretty much covers it. And that last damage phase there, I was pretty rusty. I was not expecting that Minotaur to be harassing me the entire time, and then I messed up my rotation, but because it was, you know, he had, didn't have very much health left, it was a pretty easy pretty easy four phase so give grenade launchers a try um, they're better than rocket launchers for solo play without those wolf pack rounds 50% um, <clears throat> more damage from explosive light so put on those uh, surge mods check out the loadouts at the beginning of the video you know during damage maximize your swap speed and your reload speed well not your reload speed but your your swap speed and your targeting and you should uh, you should be able to do this pretty effectively. Anyways, if you enjoyed, leave a like, uh, sub to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Only the ones with more. But we learn to make do, young wolf, and turn the edge of defeat into victory.